All right, so welcome to our final presentation. Um, we uh, are going to be joined by uh, Paulina, Paulina Cano, through, who works with Community Information Now, who is one of our amazing data partners in San Antonio, and uh, work with the Health Collaborative really closely on a number of our reports and projects. So we're very happy to have her joining us today um, to talk about one of their projects, uh, Somos Neighbors. And some of you uh, CHWs who work with the Hub have met Dr. Laura McKeeran. And so they are on the same team together. So today we'll be able to meet one more member of the team, which is Paulina. So I'll kick it off to Paulina. And just as a reminder, we'll be collecting questions and um, asking those to her at the end. Perfect. All right. Um, well, thank you, everyone. And uh, thank you, Jordan. Um, as Jordan mentioned, I work for Community Information Now. We're a nonprofit that is part of UT Health Houston uh, School of Public Health in San Antonio. And uh, I'm excited to have an opportunity to share with you a little bit about one of our most recent projects called Somos Neighbors. Um, Somos Neighbors is a tool that we're hoping will help uh, raise awareness about the health inequities in our city, which I think is particularly important during a time like we're experiencing now. Uh, this project was founded by uh, the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation and the Urban Institute. And uh, the purpose of it is to visualize gaps in life expectancy across cities in the U.S. Um, San Antonio was selected as one of those cities. And what we did is we were able to map and display those differences in life expectancy between neighborhoods in Bear County. What I'll cover in this presentation today see if I can. I will discuss a little bit more on the purpose of the project. I'll talk briefly about some of the sources, one of the, one of them in particular, one of the sources of inspiration that we had. I'll walk you through the website experience, and I'm going to do that using uh, PowerPoint slides just to um, make just in order to save a little bit of time. And then at the very end, I'll talk briefly about uh, what is the future of Somos Neighbors and how um, you can get involved? So first, um, talking a little bit about the purpose. What is it that we're trying to do with this project? First, um, we want to make sure that, that we can bridge the distance in, in people's minds that, um, there's a, that there are things in our neighborhood that make us unique and things that in our neighborhood that make us different. One of the benefits of this particular project is that we're able to compare social conditions in each neighborhood. And so by doing that, we can highlight the things that are unique, that are beautiful about each neighborhood, while also showing the things that are probably impacting our health um, and our life expectancy in a negative way. Another part that we're trying to accomplish with this project is to break some of the stereotypes and misconceptions that our life expectancy is only dependent on the things that we do individually, the things that we do um, when we try to take care of our health. And we want to do that by highlighting and emphasizing that it's not just that that matters, but also the conditions around the places that we live. And ultimately, what we want to do is to raise awareness so that we can begin to close that gap in life expectancy. So at this point, you may be wondering, how big is that life expectancy? In Bear County, in San Antonio, we have a gap of 18 years. This means that there are neighborhoods in San Antonio that live to the age of 88, while others may live to the age of 70. That is a really, really large gap. And what creates this, this gap? Well, 30% 30, 30 of that are going to be your healthy habits, the way you take care of your nutrition and, and exercising and everything that is um, concerned with trying to stay healthy. 20% of, of that factor that in, influences that gap is going to be our access to medical care. And then the remaining 50% are going to be a group of factors, a group of social factors. And some of these are going to include your income, your educational attainment, 
access to transportation, environmental pollutants that you may be exposed to. So all of this comes together and is able to influence how long are these neighborhoods going to live. This particular project was inspired by a, a project in the city of Chicago by the name of Folded Map. Folded Map was created by uh, Tanika Lewis Johnson with the intention also of displaying some of the inequities and hopefully raising awareness about how um, segregation, racism is affecting their neighborhood. So what she did is she compared uh, neighborhoods on the north and the south side of Chicago, and then brought them together through photos, videos, and the voices of their residents. It's a very interesting and powerful project. If you have a chance to look it up online, um, I think it's very interesting. Um, one of the results of this project that she created was that um, it has been exhibited in a number of universities and, and museums, so it's definitely worth checking out. This is an example of how she was able to match photos from one side of the city of Chicago with another. She's actually using the same street. It's just one is on the south side and the other one's on the north side. And you can definitely see the contrast between the photos. She was also able to bring residents together to share their stories. And I think that's something that um, in a similar way, we try to incorporate in our projects some of neighbors. Now, what I'll do is I'm gonna walk you through the website. This is a site that is right now public. Um, I'll give you the link at the end again um, so that you can have it. But um, it's live, it's working, and um, anybody can access it. So the website itself, once you go in, the very first thing that you'll notice is a brief description of the project. And you'll, you'll notice on the top an English and Spanish version, so you can get either one. As you scroll down on the website, you're gonna see a series of stories. And what we try to do is bring people from different sites of San Antonio and have them tell us what are the parts of their neighborhoods that they love, what are the parts of the neighborhood that they wanna tell us about, and also um, share why they live in those neighborhoods. So we have here Ed, the story of Edward and the story of Elva. And if you were to click on those uh, little red circles underneath the story, you would switch and get uh, a couple of other stories. So we have here the story of Shawana and Anna. And if I were to click again on one of those uh, little blue circles, I would get the story of Patton and also of Patton. So this allows us to kind of bring this, this human component to, um, to our project. As you continue to scroll down, the next thing you will see on the website is there's a space that allows um, viewers or users to write an address. Um, some of those neighbors allows you to compare, as I mentioned earlier, one neighborhood with another neighborhood and those social conditions and show us the differences and the similarities. So in this space, you can put any address or also uh, the name of a landmark, a park, and it'll automatically match you to a neighborhood. So at this point, you will see the neighborhood on the bottom. This is just a, a, an address at random, 700 Mason Street. And you will see that it has been matched, but it doesn't tell you where that neighborhood that you have been matched to is located. You'll find out at the end of the experience of some of neighbors. As you continue to scroll down the next part of this experience, it will show you um, what are the things that you have in common. So in this case, you have households with a grandparent, uh, parent and child present, essentially a multi-generational household, um, how many vehicles you have, the housing cost burden, and also with the population age 65 and older live there. One of the benefits of this is if you are uncertain about what these definitions are, what you can do is you can scroll over any of the names, any of the labels here. So let's say I put my mouse over the housing cost burden label, and what I get is a definition. So I can see that that means percent of households that spend more than 30% of their income on housing costs. 
as you continue to scroll down, you will also notice that um, you get the actual life expectancy difference. So between the neighborhood on Mason Street, the life expectancy is 71 years of age, and the one that it was matched is 77 years of age. So the one that was matched is actually living 6.2 years more on average. Now we're gonna learn about the differences. We uh, can see that there are some significant um, factors here that, that could potentially be contributing to this. The unemployment rate um, in one neighborhood is actually a little bit higher than the other. We can also see that um, having just a high school diploma is higher on the neighborhood in Mason Street. Um, also, individuals with less than a ninth grade education are higher in the neighborhood in Mason Street as well. At the very bottom, you have uh, one particular factor here, indicator related to health. So you can see that the neighborhood where Mason Street is located has a higher percentage of smokers. And then as you continue to scroll down on the website, you will see two flags where these neighborhoods are located. You also get to see how life expectancy varies across the entire county. So you can immediately see that those uh, neighborhoods with the lighter color are gonna be living between 69.8 and 75 years, and those with the darkest colors are gonna be living between 81 to 88 years. So that really gives you a good perspective on how um, our city is experiencing this inequality. We also have an opportunity on the bottom underneath the map to change your match. Um, if you wanna try out a different neighborhood that is matched in those social conditions to your neighborhood, you can come and switch it here and you would basically start um, from the top all the way down to the bottom, exploring the new neighborhood that you've been matched to. And we have five choices. Underneath the map, you also get information on what this means and also what you can do to make a difference. We have ways on the, on the bottom left that you can, it's some links where you can learn about ways that you can volunteer or just get involved with your community. So in terms of what we're trying to do um, later with Somos Neighbors, uh, we've had an opportunity to present at meetings and fairs and uh, summits, conferences, like this one to share with people why this project is so important. And we're going to, we plan to continue to do that. We also will be um, integrating this with the City Equity 101 staff training. So they'll be learning also about why life expectancy matters and how, um, how different it is for our neighborhoods in the city. Lastly, um, we'll be integrating this to the curriculum of the Health Collaboratives Community Health Worker Training Academy. So this project will also be part of that as well. And we're excited for that. We plan to bring additional enhancements to the website functionality. Um, you might have noticed there was a little tab and I'll show you in a second that says explore the data. We're gonna be developing, we're actually, um, hopefully we'll be done soon with that part um, an advanced stage essentially where people can come in and download the data and actually get a little bit more data on those social conditions that influence neighborhoods. We want to continue to spread the word and have uh, an opportunity for people to share their photo um, about what makes unique uh, their website. I'm gonna go back real quick and show you there is a little portion, I think I just kind of skipped over that, but at the bottom, um, when we're learning about those similarities and differences, of users have the opportunity to share pictures about their neighborhood. Okay. And lastly, I think in times like we're living right now with COVID-19, learning about life expectancy or learning about health inequities is very important. And so hopefully you can share this project with your friends, with your family, and together I think we can, we can make a difference. This is the explore data that I mentioned earlier. It's a little tab underneath the map that would be enabled um, hopefully by, by the summer where um, again, people can come in and download and take a bit of a deeper look into the data. 
Okay. Um, I think I have about five minutes or so, if I am correct. And um, yes. I can uh, be happy to take some pictures, um, some, some pictures, some questions. Take some pictures and some questions at the same time. <laughs> sure. <laughs> on time so we do have a couple questions thanks for sharing that info with us mm -hmm. um so and you mentioned a little bit about COVID-19 what how are some ways do you think that this project can bring positivity to people during this time I think um just by learning just by learning what are what are some of our similarities in neighborhoods and, and I think specifically with COVID-19 um I think COVID-19 is, is going to emphasize or, or show us in a, in, in a deeper way why these health inequities matter. Those neighborhoods that have quicker access to healthcare may be more likely to get tested sooner. They may be more likely to get uh, medical attention sooner than those neighborhoods that are struggling in that way. And so I think this project in particular is able to is able to highlight those differences and hopefully move people to take action and do something about about that. Very good. Yeah. And another question kind of um, opposite of that is is being asked, can can there be conflicts between people from the north with those from the south when they know that there's such a different way of life that each person has? You know, I I, I think in, in also learning about the, the project in Chicago, what we what we found is that people are very much willing to share their story and to share their experience about why the, the, the experience about their living conditions. And so because there are so many factors that come into, into life expectancy, I don't know if it would, be, it would create a conflict, but I would hope that it would create at least some sort of discussion and conversation about, you know, what kind of you know, access to schools that you have there and what kind of access to schools do I have here? And, and I think this is one of the, one of the intentions of this particular exploratory project is to try to create that discussion, hopefully not a conflict. Yeah. Yes. A good starting point of what can we do together to make it better? Correct. So, um, will Somos Neighbors be hosting another live event? Um, kind of like the launch where you share stories between two neighbors? Um, we don't have one planned just yet. We kind of put a lot of things on hold, as you can imagine. Uh, but if we, we once, once we're over this period, um, hopefully if we plan something, then we'll definitely share it. Very good. Yeah, we would look forward to that. Um, and then our final question right now is how can new CHWs uh, maybe that aren't involved in the Pathways Hub, get involved with Somos Neighbors and participate with the site? Um, one of the quickest and easiest way is for, um, like I mentioned earlier, is to share some of the photos that you may have of your neighborhood. That's something that we're definitely trying to continue to build. Um, so we have some neighbors that have so many pictures and they're awesome and they're beautiful and great, but we have so many others that are missing. And so um, it's, a, it's a very quick uh, process that you do on our website. And then the other part is, um, just to share it with people around you, um, if you have, if you're going to be speaking to an audience, if you're going to be going to a community, um, then this is a project that I think is worth just explaining and sharing. And I think those are the two easiest ways that people can get involved. Excellent. Thank you so much. Um, I would love if everyone could give a virtual round of applause to Paulina for joining us today. Thanks so much for coming and sharing the message of Somos Neighbors project again. And I know we'll continue working on that with you. Um, Thank you. At CWs. Um, you. I will go ahead and post the information about our closing session in the chat bar so everyone can move into the next room. But yes, let's show our thanks for Paulina. And thanks again for joining us. Thank you for having me.